Franak Vyakoka, Belarusian public figure and advisor to Sviatlana Sikanuskaya, says that the Belarusian military is very negative about getting involved in the war against Ukraine. He said this on Espresso TV. We have a lot of volunteers who collect this information. We also have contacts in the Belarusian Army Forces who leak information, and we have a monitoring group called Belarusian Hajun. If you want to transfer a significant number of troops to Belarusian territory, it takes at least two to three days. And as a rule, the railroad guerrillas who work will know this in advance when there is a massive transfer of troops or equipment. So far, the equipment has mostly been transferred from Belarus to Russia to the front line and not vice versa, from Russia to Belarus. Now there are not many Russian troops in Belarus, a little more than a thousand people, only a couple of Russian planes are stationed on Belarusian territory and a couple of thousand Belarusian soldiers who do not really have modern equipment and weapons to pose any threat to Ukraine. But when this situation changes, we will inform Ukraine and our Ukrainian partners about it and our contacts in the armed forces are keeping abreast of this matter. Franak Vyakorka noted that Belarus needs much more military personnel to be involved in Russia's war against Ukraine. But we know firsthand that the mood within the Belarusian military is very negative about the possible involvement of the Belarusian army in the war against Ukraine. And we know that compared to 22 years ago, the morale of the Belarusian military is much worse now. I can't even imagine mobilization in order to carry out any provocation or operation on the border with Ukraine. You need two to three to five times more military in the armed forces of Belarus. And to do this, you need to mobilize Belarusians. When it starts, it will simply cause chaos and destabilization inside the country. On the other hand, it may also give us, the democratic forces, a new window of opportunity, said the advisor to Sviatlana Sikanuskaya. After the start of the operation in the Kursk region, Belarus deployed at least 1,000 troops to the Gomel region bordering Ukraine. On August the 25th, it became known that the armed forces of Belarus were moving a significant number of personnel to the border with Ukraine under the guise of exercises. The Ukrainian foreign ministry called for an end to unfriendly actions. Ukraine's incursion through Russia's defenses during the first major foreign invasion since World War II has exposed the Kremlin's seemingly imaginary red lines and revealed a passive and muted response from Russian ruler Vladimir Putin, according to the Washington Post. Kyiv's lightning incursion into Kursk in western Russia this month slashed through the reddest line of all. A direct ground assault on Russia, yet Putin's response has so far been strikingly passive and muted in sharp contrast to his rhetoric earlier in the war. On day one of the invasion in February 2022, Putin warned that any country that stood in Russia's way would face consequences such as you have never seen in your entire history, a threat that seemed directed at countries that might arm Ukraine. If Russia's territorial integrity were threatened, we will certainly use all the means at our disposal to protect Russia and our people. It's not a bluff, he said a few months later in September. The citizens of Russia can be sure that the territorial integrity of our motherland, our independence and freedom will be ensured. I emphasize this again with all the means at our disposal, making a clear reference to Russia's nuclear weapons. But Ukraine's punch through Russian defenses in the first foreign invasion since World War II exposed Russia's military flaws and laid bare Moscow's apparently illusory red lines. The Washington Post said, some in the West are now questioning Washington's strategy towards Ukraine. A slow, calibrated supply of weapons to Ukraine to avoid escalating tensions with Russia that critics argue has dashed Kyiv's chances of driving Russia out and resulted in a grinding war of attrition with massive casualties. It is noted that Ukraine has repeatedly crossed Moscow's imaginary red lines, in particular the sinking of the Russian flagship Moskva, the explosion on the Crimean Bridge in 2022, drone attacks on the Kremlin and Moscow in 2023, the murder of propagandists on Russian territory and attacks on Russian strategic air bases. In addition, the Western equipment used by Ukrainian forces was also once a red line. 
Many analysts believe that the U.S. policy on military assistance to Ukraine should have been a shining example, but it remained timid. An unnamed Russian academic who spoke on condition of anonymity and has close ties to senior Moscow diplomats said that the Russian leadership takes the use of U.S. and Western weapons deep inside Russia very seriously. But it is unclear whether a decision has been made on how to respond. The Russian government is trying to downplay the significance of the Ukrainian incursion and the failure of its military leadership.